Once you open that door, all these cuties just come out. They know it's food time. Hi there. Welcome to At Travel Culture where we travel with you to experience different culture and lifestyles across Africa and the globe. We'll soon enough globally ha ha ha. We really appreciate our current subscribers. Thank you for bringing us this far by watching our documentaries. If you are new, kindly click the subscribe button below to kindly support our channel growth. It would mean the world to us. Thank you smiles. So today, we are traveling to pick the rabbit food where we started of by picking a sack that will hold the food. Welcome to a family home rabbit rearing. When the door opens, they think it's food time, but I'm trying to think now, they differentiate when an empty and full sack is brought. We shall be walking all the way to one of the community garden swamps. It's quite a long trail through the community, passing through neighborhood housing and corners on a sunset evening. Before village homes were far separate, but with the selling and buying of land divided into smaller plots. So it means most houses we are passing are small rentals squeezed on small pieces of land. Some act as small shops at the front and home residents at the back. And there will always be small gardens around the houses to support food production, such as these plantains below the sunset. As we trail along you can see more gardens by the roadside path. These land pieces near the road are important for business construction, such as shops. Owners perhaps haven't had the monies yet to build, so preserve them with gardens. Oh wow, first see the beautiful setting sun peeking through the garden crops. As we continue, yes, we would for example pick the rabbit food from this garden on the right that we're passing by. But if you noticed it's weeded, and the rabbit food we are looking for is one of the biggest known weeds in gardens as we shall see. As we move further we pass more residential areas. It's evening time and if wondering where are the people at. They usually come back late as the economy forces more people to work longer hours, especially women work more from late afternoon, after leaving home preparations. The small businesses run by locals such as small and permanent shops selling vegetables or small bars have now learned to attract returning evening workers and sell them the goods for example roadside restaurants for people to have a meal and save them the time of cooking, especially singulars. However, also the houses being by the roadside combine it with the dust. If a building is a home the front end of the road will be closed and open at the back so more people will be mostly found behind the roadside buildings. Oh, we needed to take a quick turn to this alley and make a few turns between houses to access the gardens usually located at the end of the houses off course. Was surprised to find this African stove with kettle boiling tea in the open. But we shall return to it later let's reach the garden first. We shall now slope down to the garden. I must say was a bit surprised with the sloping as I thought we would be the same level with the previous garden. But actually the general village landscape is a mixture of deep valleys and high hills then relatively smaller valleys and shorter hills. Our location is the shorter hills and now going to one of the deep valleys. Unlike the shorter valleys now engulfed with housing and fewer gardens, the deep valleys, like these are still more covered with gardens. Look at this beautiful banana plantation, with the country's most staple food, maduki. This valley is still rich in nature and water flow to naturally irrigating crops. From afar one would think this is a pond, but it's actually large streams of water, which are also enlarged by farmers beyond the natural stream flows. This is why sometimes man-made activities hugely affect our swamps. Bear the sunset reflections bouncing off the cover of banana leaves as we slope down this path. Have you had a chance to slope amidst banana stems ha ha ha, it's travel culture taking you everywhere. Here, we now have even a closer look at how the swamps are largely dug for water diversion. The wide deep ditches will require wooden bridges such as this, to cross in between the subplot gardens usually divided among the community members. This also leads to artificial small islands like this one in the swamps. Well, the water looks clear and clean, seems the swamp still has its powerful cleansing or aquifer effects. But let's first cross the bridge to find the rabbit food that we came for over the other end. 
Meanwhile, you can enjoy the sunset in its highest brilliance as it dawns with beautiful bouncing reflections off the nature. Still too bright even to face it. All right, ready to cross the timber bridge? Look down to watch your steps and trend carefully. You will find small bridges like these with flowing streams below in many village garden swamps across sub-Saharan Africa. This water looks clear, could there could be some fish, but in less distorted swamp stream areas, as this stream looks bigger than usual expanded into bigger ditch, probably for water diversion among different subplot gardens in this swamp, also dependent on what type of crop is grown to reduce water flow. Here, we finally embark on what brought us on this village travel. We came to pick rabbit food for those cuties we saw back there at the start commonly known black jack or hitchhikers and scientifically known as Biden's pelosa. This is a top favorite food for rabbits, probably besides carrots. For any rabbit rearing person, black jack could be the easiest food to feed the rabbits. Black jack just grows out of anywhere. Here, black jack is being plucked out of the ground and the soil is shaken off to minimize also the weight of carrying the bag. Look at this whole maize garden. Over the sunset, the long light crop is maize and the dark green is blackjack covering the whole garden as a weed. See it just grows out of nowhere and it's perhaps the largest weed found in gardens. So usually one would find a garden that has been unweeded and just plucks out the blackjack. The farmers have no problems getting this weed crop from their gardens as long as one carefully doesn't step on their planted crops like the maize here and mostly especially. One should never take their crop without permission such as the planted sugar canes. So we respectfully take only what we came for. The crops and fruit trees that grow out of nowhere the farmers traditionally have no problem if one takes them like mango fruit, guavas, except where grown for business. But if a request is made, no problem. The farmers always willingly allow one to take a share of produce. Today, with increasing soil infertility it's quite difficult to have large produce. These gardens here with lots of lush green and water streams seem to not have any issues with soil infertility or soil dryness at the moment as most parts of the country are now experiencing hot events like the northern region. However, it's the swamp ecosystem that will be much disturbed. Well, down the water streams, there will be less disturbances and the aquatic animals like green water snakes and fish may shift down below, hidden within the thick vegetation swamp, to thrive. Let's have a quick walk around the garden pointing out some of its crops before we embark back to hitchhikers plucking hehe. We have so far seen the sugarcane and a grown plantain or green bananas locally called mataku. This banana type never ripens and is cooked raw the most staple food eaten across the country. The slope across from here is the young plantain garden. Here you can have a closer look at the newly planted bananas, each stem planted in about a 10 feet hole taking a year to fruit and later producing several stems that also fruit in the process. As we move around can you recognize more crops? He rear grasses perhaps elephant grass grown to feed animals at home like cows or could be normal swamp grass and animals can be brought here to feed and drink the water. Just before we proceed someone came to fetch water or fish? Quick look! Well, children can fish in these swamps to get tiny fish for cooking as we shall see when heading back. I wondered what he was using it for when asked but was lost in his own busy world. The nearest well for cleaner water is far from here as we shall see in the village walk. So it's no surprise this stream water will be fetched for domesticated use. Used especially for washing clothes and animals drinking, and perhaps sometimes cooking. But people will try as much as possible to get well water as they usually don't need to cook it for drinking. So here is a quick look at the well water different from swamp water. All right, let's continue exploring the different crops around us. As we head uphill enjoying the setting sun, walking this path is aligned with cassava root crop on the left which takes six months to a year to grow. The stems are recycled into firewood for cooking. Here, we can see briefly how the cassava has been harvested. It's being packed for both home use but mainly commercial sale. As for the stems, we let them dry in the garden and later pick them for cooking. 
All right, let's continue. Here to the left we see the sweet potatoes crop. We already have a documentary on sweet potato growing. Check it out. And here to the right are the yams with the big leaves. Below them, look closely at the small water streams flowing throughout the swamp garden, keeping it moistured even in dry seasons. Yams are also root tuber crops harvested like the cassava, dug from ground. The yam young leaves we eat them as vegetables. Additionally also the cassava leaves we can eat them as vegetables. Here see the whole overview of the garden. What planted haven't we mentioned? Oh the sugar cane. That is fermented to make sugar that you and us drink every day. And the remains can be fermented into alcohol. Look closer here we wanted to show how these potatoes here are planted in molds different from the ones in the couple's sweet potatoes growing documentary planted on flat lining. Eucalyptus trees are mostly turned into poles, especially at that stage, for use in construction building. Alright, let's head back and fully finalize with the blackjack harvest. It's harvested in a bunch and some final soil shaking off is done before we place it on our sack for packing to easily carry home. See the whole area is covered with almost only blackjack that it's sometimes called the farmer's friend hehe. If you haven't known Black Jack here, we have a closer look, where it first flourishes with a white and yellow flower which kind of later darkens and turns thorn-like sticking to clothes, perhaps that's why its other names include Spanish needle piercing through clothes getting a hitch to hike along, where it's been attached to whether it's on human bodies or clothes or animals, hence its other name Hitchhikers. Did you know Black Jack originated from the Americas, specifically in the South like Brazil, before it was spread to other continents like in Africa? So Black Jack did not originate from Africa, as one would have thought. Black Jack hiked into Africa. But that must have been a long travel whether it arrived by plane or ship means. There are so many species transferred across continents that they usually become invasive. Like here it's one of the biggest garden weed, a farmer's friend indeed. I wonder how it's considered in Brazil its home origins. Well, this will be our final batch collection before we pack. It's everywhere but at times it can get scarce when farmers unwed the gardens or when there are more rabbit rearers and our food sources are the same especially during dry seasons. But that's a worry for another day. For now, what a great harvest we got for our cuties back home, the rabbits to enjoy today. So we are all packed up and shall be heading back home to feed the rabbits keep around. For easier weight balance the sack is carried on the shoulders. It's not heavy as most soil was shaken out. We also had a different black pack for human use. See, if we watch more what animals eat in the green environment as humans, we could adopt some aspects similarly. Who knew Black Jack had diverse aspects, but first let's hike up this hill across the bridge. It was sloppy as we came now we have to climb back ho ho. It will be alright no worries. Black Jack has to be harvested daily to feed the rabbits. So this sack pack may feed both evening time and morning time. If it's not enough, then another sack will be harvested in the morning to ensure the rabbits have their morning snack. Most of the rabbits are nursing mothers as we shall share in another documentary. These mother rabbits will require good feeding to ensure they have enough milk for the babies. Rabbits can produce many baby rabbits as high as 12. One mother, for example, has seven babies, while some may just birth one baby. We are heading back the same way we came from. Look behind us, it's getting darker in between these banana plantation, but can also appreciate the steepness of this walk back, but also good exercise for the bones, ha ha ha. Here experience a little of our hike carrying hitchhikers. Ahead, we shall be passing by some of the housing units, probably they have garden plots in the valley below. But you could also find the actual farmers come from a bit afar off. But what's interesting, they will use the small spaces available to grow at least something. With an almost global food pricing crisis, it's important everyone at least grows their own food, especially vegetables. If you can't, why not pick some blackjack and learn from our existing documentary how it's eaten. We quickly pass sort of a tenant's compound and talk about urban farming. 
is that small vegetables grown in the corner in plastic bags or tree nursery. Well, first, let's see what these kids are up to. The tenant spaces is usually small no inside kitchens. So people will cook from outside on charcoal stove but some would prefer African three-stone traditional stoves like these as they can easily use firewood away from the now expensive charcoal. Earlier, we passed when either tea was boiling or water in a kettle. Now, children will later practice with it. For example, these children went to fish in the valley and got some silver fish. I requested to document a little of their cooking. The saucepan can really get hot and food burns, so has to be put off to minimize the burning. The food is not yet ready, but it will have to as this great cook knows. Because everyone in that circle is waiting for a piece of that fish and we too shall have to return for our share. The timber ahead is a mixture of firewood and poles sold. The firewood is what's used for cooking, like what we saw the cook was cooking on. This is where we use also the cassava stems for cooking. Unlike the poles but for firewood, they would not cut down a full tree. They usually cut off branches. Or if a forested area is being cut down for development purposes like house constructions. But we still recognize the effects of firewood pressures on tree reductions exacerbating climate changes. It's my hope we find solutions sooner are especially in villages where the energy sources are from mainly from firewood and charcoal. Meanwhile, those kids cooking remind me in African culture, where as children that's actually how we learn to cook in small tins and saucepans. These kids are lucky to fish that they have a sauce. For us, we could pretend with soil in our saucepans and use banana leaves as plates. It's nostalgic ah, uh, but also as kids that's how we fully learn chores practicing from adults how to cook clean a mango tree as a house managing a family. Mostly importantly, that's how long-time trustable friendships are like built forever. Of course, and those of less trust. Childhood friends are amazing. It's getting darker now, we see more people by the road, some heading in the small village center ahead, that we shall explore in a future documentary. Kindly subscribe. Some may be heading home, others catching up with friends others going for a hangout, and many to do business like street restaurant. Well for us, we won't reach the center, but branch off at this alley to head home and feed the waiting mother rabbits so they can also later breastfeed their babies. It's a whole lot of other work nursing the babies as shall share in near future. We kindly request for your subscription for notification. As we slope back, looking over the horizon, the brighter sunset earlier has already set from this point, starting to reflecting a beautiful mixture of colors, perhaps bouncing from another point where it's still setting going down in full beautiful golden brightness from our end. Here looking down closely do you see another three stone stove next to this wall. The pile we saw earlier are bricks that are used in construction of these houses. These here are shared washrooms. This here is a home vegetable garden supported by an old recycled mosquito net to wad off insects but also passers like us. Yay, we back, ready to see how the cuties feed. This time as we open the rabbits, mostly mother rabbits, know its food has finally arrived. The only other times this door opens they know they are being taken to nurse babies. For now, let's first feed mother rabbits. The food is dropped on the metallic floor and they feed all together. Sometimes it's put inside their tiny rooms to feed on slowly. They have no issues eating together, see? Some food is picked off for another extra set of younger rabbits kept elsewhere. For now, they cannot be mixed together. So this the black jack we just picked from the garden and you can see how the rabbits excitedly enjoy it. You am not sure what part they like most, leaves or flowers, perhaps the stems, but those are hard. Comment to let us know please. These rabbits were bought and have quickly multiplied. That's the beauty about keeping rabbits and why more people are venturing into rabbit rearing, especially the youth. I cannot confirm if the rabbits are reared for reselling. The focus was more on their food source, nursing and feeding kindly please. Be sure to check out the rabbits eating in nature documentary.
Three of these rabbits are nursing mothers with baby rabbits. They will later nurse their babies. This is Black Jack will feed them until morning when they will get a fresh snack around mid-morning the next day. The remaining food will be put in their rooms to snack on at night. All right, now we shall go to the other section to feed the younger rabbits with the separated food. The rabbits in this section less than three months kept separate to grow and may be later shifted to the other section to leave room for the current baby rabbits when they grow. The food is put in a corner for all the young rabbits to feed on and each will navigate to feed amidst the group, whether it means jumping over each other. Once the food has been put, they will be closed in so that they don't move around as most are still young for good navigation. It's an iron sheet door with a pole support. You will pardon the camera lighting that is affecting their eyes to look weird in colors of pink or red or perhaps orange. It's the camera reflection. The normal eyes are black or brown. It's kinda of the human eye coloring. It's interesting how they all eat together as a group. I hope you have enjoyed this documentary of how we started hiking to pick the hitchhikers or blackjack or Spanish needle also known as farmer's friend one of the favorite rabbit foods. We thank you for joining us. And the series will continue. So stay en route with us. It's been a long evening to feed the rabbits now. We shall close them in and leave them for the night till next day. That quickly brings us to another quick aspect of this documentary. Well, did you know that the blackjack we just fed to the rabbits, it's important to us as humans as well? Congolese have since time memorial used it as part of their food supplement and here we are only adapting recently. Black Jack can be cooked as a normal vegetable and added as a mixture to other soups to be eaten with foods such as bread or rice or anything of choice as quickly shown here from this quick demo. But better to watch the full documentary for detailed explanations. Eating Black Jack brings lots of health benefits such as most importantly combating high ulcers effect. Black Jack can be eaten raw or squeezed blended as a juice for drinking. And Black Jack can make indeed a herbal hot and iced tea cup. Wow! Wasn't that pretty cute? Memorable!